Welcome to another session of A Day in the Life of Devrel. I'll be performing Devrel tasks and you can follow along. The broader goal here is to prepare materials intended to be used by hackathon participants at an upcoming eGlobal hackathon. For this task, I will be creating a Git repo within the Hedera Dev GitHub org. This repo is intended as a new base repo. Note that this repo is not specific or intended only for this hackathon or even hackathons in general. Rather, it is general purpose to be used in any situation where we would like the developer to get up and running with minimal friction. This video will be silent and in fast forward. However, I will occasionally verbalize my thoughts on the important parts. Then we'll have a recap at the end. Let's begin. Here, I'm writing the features out and the point here is not just for the readme itself, but also for my own planning purposes and for me to be clear about the purpose of this entire repo. The Hedera SDKs have a feature which turns a bit 39 seed phrase into private keys. However, the bit 44 and bit 39 specifications require this method to take in two inputs, the seed phrase and the derivation path. The Hedera SDKs didn't cater to that second input, instead opting to hard code it. So about two weeks ago, in, in anticipation of this and several other related tasks, I implemented an additional function in the Hedera SDKs that would accept the derivation path as an input. And now they have been reviewed, merged, and released as new versions. Now we have this new method, two standard ECDSA, SCCP 256K1 private key custom derivation path, which we can use. Previously, the workaround was to introduce an external library, such as ethos.js, if we wanted to do this, but with this new version of the SDK, we don't need another dependency anymore. Here, I'm working out how to use the GitHub APIs to get the latest version of a repo based on its releases. At first, I go with the main repos endpoint, and then from the API response, I discover that there is a more specific releases URL. So I go back to the GitHub docs, look up that API, and it turns out that it is a better fit for what I'm after. I constrain it to set per page query parameters to one, since I'm only interested in the latest release. I'm also looking for a way to specify the order so that I get the latest, but there doesn't seem to be that option, at least according to the docs. The response is latest anyway, so it's fine, or be potentially fragile. Remember that my focus is on speed. I want the dev to be able to start working on the first step in the tutorial with minimal wait time. That is why I'm using the Docker image to run RPC Relay because this comes pre-built and takes just under a minute to pull the image, compared to about 5 minutes for a good clone plus npm install. This is the main script that does all the setup. The overarching idea here is still a focus on speed. I want the dev to quickly finish the first steps of the tutorial, which is likely going to be creating and funding their account. We do so by setting up a .n file with all the credentials, but manually copy pasting values around is going to be fiddly and error prone and also take more time. So to shortcut that, we're going to have a script which simply prompts the developer following along for their responses. And importantly, many of these have sensible defaults so that they can just accept the default and move on quickly. The other thing 
that the script does is to construct and overwrite the .env file for the developer to avoid them having to copy paste yet again. Again, the focus here is on speed, and it does so by anticipating and reducing the number of developer friction points in the initial setup. One developer friction point that I encountered during developer usability tests was that I discovered that devs might input placeholder accounts that weren't usable. While this is an appropriate tactic in some cases, in this case it often ends up wasting time. Therefore, this validation is extremely important to ensure that the private key actually matches the account ID and it's currently funded. The principle here is to fail fast, that is to identify this invalid state upfront and ask the developer to rectify this before moving on. If this is not done, another thing that I observed during developer usability testing was that after finishing some later part of the tutorial, when they executed the script of the app that they have written, it would error, but the cause of the error was misattributed to some problem with the script or app code, rather than the basic account configuration, which was the actual cause. Hence, the need to fail fast here.
Our PC relay is not required to interact with the Hedera services. However, if you would like to use EVM developer workflows, such as using Hardhat or Foundry as dev frameworks, or using Ethers, JS, or VM as libraries, then you need to you need something that speaks the language that these developer tools understand, which is JSON RPC, and therefore where the RPC relay comes in. In the current iteration of the Hello World sequences, the instruction for the devs following along is to sign up for a third-party SaaS called Archive, which was the fastest way to get up and running with RPC Relay, if doing it by hand. However, the idea here is to avoid any manual setup so that the dev is up and running as soon as possible, and therefore RPC Relay is going to be set up and run via scripts. This script is fairly straightforward and could technically run right away. However, a single prompt is needed in case the account ID is not provided and instead we only have an account EVM address. This means that the account potentially is unfunded or otherwise not ready to use by the RPC relay. Therefore, we prompt the developer to provide an account ID for these purposes before proceeding. Here, I'm running the script manually on localhost to ensure that it behaves as expected. Here, I'm creating a Gitpod YAML file from scratch, referencing the Gitpod docs as I go along. The idea here is to have a main Gitpod task that runs the script that prompts for all the inputs to create the main.n file. While that is happening, in the background there are two other tasks. The RPC Relay Pull task simply pulls the Docker image and starts immediately. 
and the RPC relay run task stalls until the main task is completed because the .n file is needed in order for it to run properly. The gp url command here is used to pass in an environment variable so that the main script can detect it. This is an internal git pod command that returns a URL at which a specific exposed port number is available. I know that we will be using the default port number for RPC Relay, however in git pod I can't simply use localhost, instead this is the equivalent. The gp sync done command here is used as an event flag of sorts to signal that a particular task is completed. And the gp sync await command is used to listen for that type of signal and delay the task from starting until the signal is received. This combination here means that the main task must complete before the RPC relay run task starts. This is indeed because the RPC relay needs the .n file output by the main script. Here I've run into several errors that I'm debugging, mostly around works on my machine but then of course does not run it in a repeatable manner based on the config and the scripts when run on Gitpod. So these errors that I had to go through was um, first forgot to npm install, second forgot about how bash scripts handle relative paths when cwd or current working directory is not the same as the directory of the script, third added proper Gitpod port number configurations to ensure that they are publicly exposed and to suppress notifications on the other two ports. And fourth, use set-e to ensure that the main script does not trigger gpsync done if there was an error. Okay, done with the task. Let's do a recap. The main activity here was to write three scripts, which would 1. Set up the config required for a user to operate one or more Hedera accounts, and secondly, run the RPC relay server, extracting its config from the main file so that everything could happen behind the scenes. The secondary activity was to wire these scripts up such that they would work within Gitpod. Let's take a step back. Why did we take this approach? Well, the main thing about tutorials is that you need to cater to developers who are trying out your technology for the first time. The best practice for this, in terms of bare minimum, is to 1. List out the prerequisites before starting the tutorial. 2. To write a tutorial which guides its reader um, step by step how to complete the task. And 3. Include a demo repo which demonstrates this. And what we're doing here goes beyond this bare minimum by Firstly, automating the setup of the prerequisites as much as possible, and secondly, providing a means to avoid setting up the prerequisites in the first place through the use of Gitpod. So why would we want to do this? Number one, reduce developer friction. Number two, increase fraction of developers who complete the tutorial. Number three, decrease the amount of time taken to complete the tutorial. This actually impacts both the previous ones because a shorter time taken means less developer friction and a shorter time taken also means a larger fraction of developers completing the tutorial. Hopefully the use of this base template to create tutorials results in more successful and therefore happier developers, whether they're doing help world sequences or they're doing hackathon projects. That's it for this task. We'll catch you in the next one.